This is Lance and Carl from Childlike Empress, and you're watching Local Band Smokeout. Well, welcome to the Local Band Smokeout. But, uh, no problem. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Brian Wright! Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> yes! Kind sir, do me a favor, properly introduce yourself, let me know whereabouts in the world you are, plug and promote anything and everything. Sounds good, man. Uh, my name is Brian Riot. Uh, originally based in SoCal at the moment, I'm staying in Tennessee. Um, and when it comes to what I want to promote, uh, basically what I'm up to, I got done playing quite a few shows over the, the last summer with bands like Conmouth Kings, Earshot, Edema, etc. And um, now I'm basically just focused on recording an EP, hoping to get that out or by spring of next year. And then go back to doing shows, I'm hoping around maybe February or, um, or February, March or so. February or March, coming coming back with something. that I know we've got... Uh a new song that we played earlier from you and the the mix seems like a little bit sharper and better than than the previous stuff are you working with new people are you trying different things so the funny thing is yeah it's kind of a long discussion i'm i'm gonna try to wrap it up like as i'm gonna try to answer as quick as i can because <laughs> you know but uh basically originally you know past few years i worked with a guy that um, you know, it's nothing against him. I think it's just when it comes to his genre of music, he's more used to more of the hip hop rap side rather than the metal, you know, having to balance out the loud drums, the guitars, all that. Um, the last song that, that I released, I'm pretty sure you're talking about either Freed or Nothing's New with those two. Uh, basically, I kind of did the mixing and mastering myself, but it's still not quite where I want it to be. But it's a little bit sharper. Um, I am planning to go up to Pennsylvania near Scranton uh, to work in a studio called Legacy Recordings that did music with bands like Strange Kids, uh, Suicide Puppets, a few others I can't remember right now. I'm super excited, super stoked for that. Um, but yes, yeah, I've, I've done I've, a little bit of experiment, a little bit of a difference. But at the end of the day, I'm still not like a professional engineer or, or you know, by any means. So I definitely want to get it professionally mixed and mastered when it comes to the songs I'm, I'll be working on in the, in the near future. How did you find the Scranton producer? Um, so basically, uh, I'm trying to think when was it? I want to say it was about late 2022. I was on a bracket on DW Presents to possibly play at Rockville. That happened this year. Uh, I made it to the bracket. Unfortunately, I, I didn't win the finals or anything like that. But that guy, uh, one of the people that who hosted, his name is Josh. He, um, his band, Strange Kids, records their music at Legacy. And, and I believe, I'm not 100% correct, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe he also uh, owns, like partly owns the studio or something like that. So I got in contact with his guys. That's how I kind of got the connections. And basically, we've been emailing, exchanging emails uh, sent for the past week or two, and we're just trying to schedule a date on when to basically meet up over there and record because at the end of the day pennsylvania is still a good like 10 hours away from me so it's definitely a a, a trip that i have to plan out for so. sure and uh i know you've you've kind of like linked up and become like really good buddies with my homie nate youngblood yeah how, man. how a, did how did that connection come about and uh how has that helped affect your career as far as being able to do so many shows and opening for big artists through him yeah let, so let me think um how it began I want to say it was from you guys. I want to say um, back in March of last year, or this year, technically, um, I want to say you guys posted a story promoting him, and I saw that he was a promoter. I decided to follow him. He followed me back, and then there's a show that was going on. Unfortunately, I couldn't make, but at that time, I didn't know if I was able to make it, and so I kind of hit him up like, hey, you know, like if you need any openers, like, you know, just keep me updated. So we've basically, he's basically kept in touch with me since then. And then the first show was Fire It Up Fest with Green Jelly. And that was the first one that really appealed to me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in. And ever since then, we kind of just, I don't know how, maybe, uh, you know, we both share like a, a really strong love for like new metal for like that 2000s <laughs> metal kind of taste. Maybe that's what did it. But all in all, I think just, we just vibe very well. And then from there, um, he's been very fortunate enough and very good to give me the opportunities to open up for those bands and, and basically hasn't really stopped yet. Um, you know, I, I just can't wait to see what the future holds, man. Cause 
I mean, he single-handedly made that big rock bar in Pinion Hills into like a legitimate venue for these very well-known bands to play at. And it wasn't like that one year, two year, three years ago. So all credit to him, you know, but all in all, he's a great dude. And I think that's mainly what uh, created that connection. And yeah, listen really quick. There's, you know, there's quite a few people that you'll meet in this industry that will try to scam you and all that. He's not one of those guys. He's a really good dude, really cool dude. And um, I can see why you and guys, why you and him are good friends as well. So yeah, I've known him for years, probably like seven or eight years. Uh, he used to be in uh, this band called Dirty Machine, where my old band would play with him all the time. And uh, we actually have a show with him in March and one in April. And uh, if you're if you're able to attend, please, please play both of those gigs, brother. Yeah, man. Um, so, you know, with the situation that I'm in right now, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to turn out or at least as I expected. I'm I'm one of those weird guys that always expects like the worst case scenario, but um that is actually like roughly around the time frame where I did want to start playing anyways February or March or April. Um I would love to, man. And speaking of dirty machines, he literally uh, Nate just literally texted me like a link to I think their newest video and it has his wife and his family in there. Yeah, He's yeah. like, hey you gotta check this out. I'm like, oh yeah. And then I listened to them. I'm like, yeah, this actually sounds sick because I've never knew about that band before. And he told me that I guess one of the guys from Seven Dust um made a record label and they're on that label. Yeah, Morgan so Rose. Morgan out. Rose. Yes. Yeah. So I've been checking out more music from that label and it's always refreshing hearing new blood, like new young blood, new music that's actually, you know, because I feel like there's a lot of underground bands that don't get the shot that they deserve but you know that's why like local bands smoke out um nate when it comes to him helping promoting bands when it comes to dw presents all other you know roadhounds all kinds of other uh what you call outlets out there that help give these bands a platform it's a very beautiful and refreshing thing in my opinion from from your first show you ever played to now having a bunch under your belt what have you learned what have you changed in your set uh always sometimes things go wrong now you have backup plans oh, yeah. when those things go wrong what what have you learned so yeah the first show um the first show that i was actually able to play with nate um the con mouth king show you actually attended thank you by the way I, i'll tell you right now i did not expect to see it like i didn't I, it was really I was like surprise mother yeah right. <laughs> i remember i was playing and i saw you i was like oh shit that's like that's bg oh my god okay hey what's up you know but uh, i try my best to like still go along with the set but um you know what i learned is yeah there, there's some things um to definitely prepare for um i was using the backing tracks for my instruments during that performance because i didn't have a full band at that time it overheated you know during the last like couple minutes of the set which i'm thankful that Dude, it was like it was like a hundred something degrees that day yeah yeah so that's why you know so i found ways to prepare for that but one of the most things uh most important things that i'm really excited about now is before i didn't really have a full band now i do i just haven't played a show yet with the full band um but how'd you find them how'd you how'd you find the the fellas yeah so basically um the bassist that i found so i do guitar and vocals um my brother he he's been playing bass for a while now it's just um we haven't really had the chance to rehearse together or really um try to really play together until recently until the crazy town show or before that preparing for that and then um so he agreed that you know he'd be in as the bassist and you know, it's always good to have family because we always have like that brotherly love since, you know, we were kids. We we're always like he was always my best friend. I was always his best friend. So having that bond really helps the band, especially when you see other bands that break up because of for whatever reasons. Um, and then when it comes to the drummer, uh, she was actually playing at that Crazy Town Fest, that Crazy Fest with her band, I believe, called Black Calderon. And it was so funny because I never really had a chance to speak to her around that time. Uh, we basically just ended up following each other from that. And then we started uh, exchanging DMs. And then at some point I told her, like, hey, you know, if you're interested in drumming, like for some shows, like I'll let you know when I have some shows next year. I sent her some wave files of my songs that not only I'm working on, but the ones basically that are on my set. She's been practicing for the past, I want to say, month or so, month, month and a half. So I'm like, hey, you know, early 2024 is what I'm aiming for when it comes to playing these shows. 
I would love to have you as a drummer. And she agreed. So basically it's going to be us three um, <laughs> playing shows from now on. I'm hoping to start that around early 2024. Um, hopefully, you know, like by March, saying, hopefully, shows, hopefully by March, right? Yes. Yeah, man. Yeah. That would be sick, man. That would, that would be sick. I'm so down 100%. Hell yeah. Awesome. Uh, did we do trivia last time? We did, yeah, and I, I remember I missed out on, like, a very obvious South Park trivia, which blew my mind, because, like, I've seen almost every episode, I'm like... Do you want to try, do you wanna try so one more long. time? Sure, man, we, we can try whatever you like, man. Do you do you have the hot sauce? If not, mm. if not, go get it. It gives me a second to, like, adjust on the camera side. All right, I'm gonna, I I'm using my phone. I'm going to put my phone down just really quick, and I'm going to try to find some, and I'll be yeah, right Yeah, no worries. Take your time. All right, thank you, man. It gives me a second to see if I can figure out how to get rid of myself here because I used to be able to do that and I can't remember how I can delete this little area right here. Now I, now I saw Sadie Daddy's suggestion, which is a trickier way to do it, but I can do it real quick. So we'd have to do uh, filter, edit, crop. And then doing this in real time is going to be tricky. So just bear with me for a second. Hold right, on, hold I on. Hold on one no second. It's gonna probably be like. Ah, oh, this is too much to do right now. It's too much. We'll figure it out another time. But uh, what what did you bring? Um, this is pretty much the only one I could find. Uh, Frank's red hot sauce. I'll take it. I'll I'll just take a little chug or a good sized chug if I get it wrong. And you and you <laughs> want it? Do you want it in South Park again? Uh, sure. Why not? Okay. I need a, I need a second on that. Um, what are you allowed to tell us? I know that the new band has been formed, new members and stuff, but uh, what, what are you allowed to tell us as far as your overall, this is what I want to accomplish by the end of 2024. Like if we did this again, the week of Thanksgiving, November 2024, where do you want to be as an artist? Um, you know, last year when I was on here, I... I don't think I accomplished everything, but I accomplished way more than I expected, to be honest, because it's just it's so unpredictable. You never know um, what what I'm aiming for, at least my goals as a musician. The main two, I would say, is I want to at least experience going on my first tour, like legitimate on the road, traveling states, playing shows at different states, if possible. And then getting signed by a label that actually reckon yeah, that recognizes me as an as an artist and sees what i'm doing and it understands my vision those are like the main two goals you know we'll see what happens but those are the main two goals that, that i have in mind um really quick right now when it comes to my like vision of what's going on in the future i'm trying to aim for like that i've I'm kind of changing my sound a little bit. Originally, it was very like industrial, new metal based, something like that. I still want to keep some of the new metal elements, but now it's like I'm trying to aim for more of like a modern metal core, like Bad Omen, Spirit Box, Bring the Horizon type kind of kind of vibe to to my new music because I feel like that's I don't know. I feel like that's where I kind of found myself as a musician, and unfortunately, I haven't really released anything with that sound yet. But um, it, it will be coming right around the block very soon, so I, I can't wait to put that out. Very but, cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, here we go with some trivia right here, some South mm -hmm. Park trivia. Here we go. I think it, I think it's kind of easy. I think it's kind of an easy one. We're just gonna do one, but uh, just to to redemption trivia for South Park. All I want to know is Kenny's alter ego name. Oh, uh, Mysterio. Oh, yep. Give me a hell yeah! By the it, way, one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> it is Mysterion. Easy one. I got a, I got a Pepper Palace Fusion Ghost Garlic, Ghost Garlic Hot oh, Sauce. Shit. It's really not right. that bad. It's it's um probably like a four out of ten on the heat, but it's definitely some wing sauce. Can we expect any uh any features on them Scranton recordings? features man i mean i would love to i'm definitely open to it i just um i can't really guarantee anything because unfortunately i haven't really been in like any real talks with any other artists but i remember there are a couple guys 
uh, in the past few months that kind of made it sound like, hey, if you want to collab, let me know. So who knows? Maybe I'll hit them up once I start recording. Be like, hey, remember back in July or August or whatever when you offered the collaboration? Just letting you know it's on the table, you know. But um, I I'm, I can't guarantee anything, but I'm, I'm definitely open to it 100%. Did you did you ever link up with uh, Breaking Serenity at the, the Cottonmouth King show? Breaking Serenity. Um. I don't believe I linked up with them at that. I think they had. Show. I think they had a a merch tent, but didn't play that day. Yeah. So that that show, I don't believe I did, or maybe if I did, I just don't remember because it was really hot. I'm not gonna lie, I was like really dehydrated at least for the first half of the day, so I don't remember too much. But but um, I hooked up. I uh, linked up with Nico from Breaking Serenity at the Edema show. And okay. he's, yeah, he's a good dude. Um, he told me, he gave me a lot of great advice, a lot of really, really good advice just as musicians. Um, this is around the time when uh, Gozart was getting ready to play for uh, their performance at Hell and Heaven Fest. And I was like, damn, like, cause we were talking about that. And I'm like, man, like talk about opportunities. I mean, it's, it's refreshing to see things like that. Cause honestly, we, you know, I feel like we need more just, more ears to to a lot of the unsigned independent underground artists that are busting their ass to yeah to I, I, make feel a name like, for I feel like I feel like he could he could help as far as uh just providing features if needed for certain songs he knows like everybody in in the local scene and he's got he's got some pull so I would holler maybe at him. I'll hit him up yeah definitely man definitely but what? I appreciate it thank you for that up. oh yeah no worries well Brian I appreciate you jumping back in and, and giving us an update on on your music the fact that you're now got the full band I'm excited I hope we can get you in either the March even if we need to wait another month and get you in the April shows those are both going to be done from uh, from Youngblood although we do have something at Froggies and, and uh, two at Froggies and uh, well the whiskey one I can't do anything about that's that's their their control but yeah, some stuff with Youngblood uh, hopefully we can get you on one of those, man. That or or well, both. Yeah. That'd be fun. Please keep me updated. Let me know. Um, I mean, you know where to, where to hit me up. So please let me know. Keep me updated. I I definitely want to be in the loop, and I I, I would definitely be down one hundred percent. Hell yeah, I appreciate it. We look forward to the Scranton recordings coming out next year. <laughs> the new live performance, ladies and gentlemen, Brian Brown. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Enjoy your day. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, and you-